Hi everybody, welcome to Oregon Preparedness. This is Oleg. You know, the tension in the world are back and they're more tense than ever. Between the superpowers, like United States and Russia, and of course, there is others in the mix, like North Korea. <clears throat> you know, ever since Soviet Union fell apart, there was no so to speak, uh, Cold War for a couple of decades. And um, people really stopped thinking about possibility of nuclear war, you know? But lately, for whatever reason, seems like, seems like it's, that possibility exists again. It seems like, it seems like a Cold War is, to an extent, is back on. And uh, with that in mind, you, you just can't help but think of, of the, all the possibilities, you know? Of what can happen, what could happen, and if it does happen, what are you going to do? Well, uh, first thing first, you know, <clears throat> before anything happens, and while you can, you should get some pills called potassium iodide those pills you can get them online you know they will help your uh, your thyroid because your thyroid gets hurt from radiation before anything else does and if your thyroid thyroid is gone so will the rest of your health pretty much so uh, get those potassium iodide pills, have them in your preps, in your bags, bug out, get home bags, in your home preps, just have a bottle everywhere. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, people who have some extra money, uh, they, and they live, you know, in a house, you know, sp specifically on a bigger property, on some acreage, they can afford to have those fallout shelters. And what it is, is essentially a bomb shelter. It's not uh, really, it's underground. It's not meant to withstand super hard nuclear blast next to you. No, that won't save you. But it is designed <clears throat> so you can survive there for a month. Because they say that after about 28 days after the nuclear explosion, it is not exactly safe, but safer to come out. The levels of radiation are not as intense as they were at first. And, you know, many things depend on how a nuclear bomb was blasted. If it was blasted in the air or in the ground, if the blast was in the air, the radiation will disappear faster from the area where the blast took place. If it was, you know, if the bomb hit the ground, then it's worse because then you have fallout that also includes all that earth particles and it, it is just generally stays around longer and harder and longer to get rid of it. So, when nuclear bomb explodes, you know, I'm not sure exactly to, you know, to the final details, but I know this for a fact. First, first like three days, you should not climb out of your bomb shelter, no matter what. Even first week is dangerous. Couple of weeks goes by, if you get out, you need to get the heck out of the area really fast but after about 28 days supposedly let's let's just say a month uh, radiation levels are much lower than they were at first and I would still say once you come out of your shelter you still need to bug out of the place the farther the better the faster the better because, you know, why would you want to risk getting exp uh, and, uh, radiation exposure, you know? 
there's no sense. And, you know, if you have one of those shelters, of course, you know, you fill it up with food and water and ways to go to the bathroom and clean yourself. And um, there is really amazing, really amazing uh, shelters. You know, there's a YouTube channel called Atlas Shelters. Man, I, I watch every episode they have. It's so interesting. And they have all kinds of shelters. So I would highly recommend checking them out. You know, they're they're not my friends or anything. I'm not uh, trying to promote them for any specific reason other than they build awesome shelters. And if you have the means, definitely do it. Get one of those for yourself. So if you can afford a shelter, it's the best. Of course, I would say once you have the shelter, which will, you know, cost you, I don't even know how much, you know, could probably run you anywhere from fifteen to $50,000, I would think, you know, sky's the limit with those things. But you also should prepare in your garage or in a separate building, bug out vehicle, the one you're gonna use after the explosion. Hopefully nobody will steal it while you're while you're sitting and waiting out in your shelter, but you have to take some preventative measures so no one does steal it, you know. Um, <clears throat> make it, make sure that nobody can get it out of the garage, you know, there, there can be many ways to do that. But let's say an explosion happens in your area and you didn't leave right away. <clears throat> you go in your shelter. After one month you come out, if your car, your truck, whatever, is still there, not damaged by the explosion, you get in, take with you bare minimum, I would say just your documentation, and minimum food, just minimum, just to survive one or two days, just as long as you get out from the area, you know, hopefully you have some money, if you don't have money, have some silver, gold, any ways to purchase something, to purchase food, first of all, because you're gonna wanna eat a couple times a day, maybe three times a day, you know, your children, if you have any, they're gonna wanna eat. And of course, if, and this is the best case scenario, the worst case, if you, if there is a bomb that exploded and you really don't have a bomb shelter and you survived, you need to just, don't even worry about your documentation. You just need to jet away from that explosion in opposite direction and figure things out later. Grab your family, grab your kids and just go away. Because, you know, I've watched some, uh, some interviews with some Japanese people who survived Hiroshima blast and some of them have lived to be 90 years old you know they've they've lived into 1980s 1990s even some 2000 and you would say how how did they do that well there is few things you know in play of course the blast happened and they were in the area they were literally running away without looking back and um some of them did get lucky, some didn't. For an example, if the wind was blowing in the, in the direction you're running, you're probably not gonna make too many years after that. Maybe not even too many months. You're gonna get healthy dose of radiation. However, if you're just lucky, you know, you start running away and the wind is blowing opposite direction, which means you're getting away from nuclear blast and you're not getting any radiation, maybe just small dosages. And small dosages we get on a regular basis from even sun, you know, the sun radiation. And, you know, when you go to the hospital to get some x-ray done, you get some radiation, you know. Yet you're still alive and you live on and on. So, if bomb goes off, there is still hope, there is still chance. If you don't have nuclear shelter, just bug out. In your car if you can, if it's drivable, if the roads are not blocked, drive as long as you can. Because the road could get blocked 
just by the debris from the from the blast you know of course if you live on the outskirts for example of some major city the bomb would not fall on on the suburbs it would fall on downtown obviously and of course as soon as that happens you would know it immediately you know with just with uh, noise from the explosion with social media with everything there's no way to hide those things you know you will know it immediately so um just get get your kids wife whatever whatever you have if you happen to be home yeah grab your documentation get get your wallet with credit cards and send some money and leave and the and leave and just don't look back and go as far as possible as fast as possible figure things out later but even worse case scenario if you live somewhere near nuclear power plant and if you're a prepper if you're prepper minded you probably i would recommend while things are good and peaceful i would move away from them i would move away from power plant at least at least 100 miles away at least that way in case something happens an accident or a nuclear bomb falls on a nuclear plant then that would be super disaster you still have better chance getting away without getting any radiation and once again i'll use i'm from the ukraine as i mentioned many times before i will use what happened in ukraine in 1986 chernobyl accident there was no nuclear bomb that fell on it but there was major accident and nuclear power plant is much worse than a bomb the bomb explodes no matter how powerful it is and radiation starts to just get diluted and diluted and diluted because the winds are blowing and getting things away when nuclear power plant explodes there is no end that radiation keeps puffing up and puffing up and puffing up for years to come so things can happen chernobyl fukushima there is i'm sure other nuclear accidents that they hide and try not to talk about because you know they don't want to scare people and get them into panic but <clears throat> these two major accidents in the recent history and there is just no end to it so if you live near one of those move away <clears throat> if you can of course maybe you can't but if you can move away at least 100 miles away and uh, if you don't live near one that's great and if you have bug out shelter nuclear shelter underground then you're doing great you don't need to worry about trying to escape because imagine if there is nuclear blast it will be very difficult to escape everybody's gonna try to escape so <clears throat> if you have nuclear shelter i would not even try to escape i would just get into my shelter lock the doors and stay there for a month and figure it out later what to do next and of course if you are if you're out of luck if you don't have shelter and it happens then just do best you can and hope for the best grab your family get in your car drive away in opposite direction from the blast if you cannot drive anymore for whatever reason walk and uh, just keep doing it until you get away until you get 50 100 miles away 200 miles away once you get two or three hundred miles away you can kind of take a break and and relax a little bit but still continue going away you know i think in my opinion just judging by chernobyl accident i lived about 420 450 miles away from chernobyl and you know some of my family and friends still live there and it's been 30 some years and they're still alive and <clears throat> they're still they're okay you know so i think if you're four five hundred miles away then you're safe you can you can just place anchor there and stay there and above all don't forget to buy those pills for your thyroid the potassium iodide very important and keep them you know if it ever happens pop those pills give them to everybody in your family 
and hope for the best and get away from it. So I'll conclude that. I hope this will actually never happen. But as with everything else, it is good to be ready. It's good to be prepared. So um, be ready, stay ready for everything, including this scenario. Everybody, good luck. I'll talk to you in the next upload. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to share and like and subscribe. Thank you.